Hi guys, it is another hot, miserable, sweltering day. Here in the end times in the former paradise of Garfield, Texas, ending up probably the triple digits again today. Oh God, here on Friday, May 18th, 2018, see if we can have another record heat day in Austin. So before I flee back, to the Austin Public Library to enjoy the air conditioning uh, for the rest of the day. I'm going to do what I do every Friday. And even on the, the new Humpty Dumpty tribe, this is my, on Friday, is my ecological meltdown roundup rant. Despite the fact I realize that nobody listens to this, um, I actually think the ecological meltdown roundup rant is probably the most important one of the week. So Friday, I will keep on doing what I've been doing for years, and that's uh, opening up my email box for uh, more evidence of how this planet is heading directly into a brick wall at uh, 67,000 miles an hour. And as I do always, I don't know whether we're going to be one or two parts, but, but we're going to start off as I always do with my number one favorite uh, environmental roundup, and that is from my buddies at mangabay.com. What's going on with Rhett Butler and the boys? <clears throat> so we're going to start out, as we so often do, in the Brazilian. Amazon, where, at least according to Manga Bay, Brazilian Amazon oil palm deforestation under control for now, anyway. Uh, so, you know, this, this is just the latest story uh, about what, what, what they're claiming here is that so far, uh, the, the oil palm uh, bulldozers have not inflicted severe damage on primary rainforest in the Amazon for the simple reason that they already have uh, 30, they already have over 120,000 square miles of degraded land, uh, meaning former former uh, rainforest that has already been destroyed for cattle pasture, and so what they're doing is just planting uh, all of these abandoned cattle pastures into oil palm. Uh, so this this again. It is the definition of good environmental news that since the cattle ranchers, they're the ones who destroyed the forest, so instead of maybe reforesting this 120,000 square miles, they're just going to plant it with oil palm and say, we're not doing anything to, to kill the planet. The planet was already dead when we got here. Uh, you, you know, which button do you, do you pick up? Yes. So, uh, but before you get too happy, researchers fear that major deforestation, you know, fresh deforestation due to an oil palm production boom could occur in the near future. Hmm, do you think so? <sighs> yeah, as soon as they've covered 120,000 square miles of former rainforest. Okay, as long as we're down there, uh, just more updates about uh, the assaults on Brazil's environmental laws. Good God, uh, the the agri the big agriculture lobby 
uh, which has completely taken over uh, Brazil and the Amazon jungle, has now launched a, a new raft of amendments attached to unrelated bills that would undo many of Brazil's environmental and indigenous uh, protections. Uh, here is allowing the ownership of, of Amazon rainforest, what they're talking about, land by foreigners currently pro forbidden for the purpose of building dams, transmission lines, and other energy facilities. Passage of this law would greatly benefit China. Otherwise, they're legalizing the Chinese land grabbing of the entire Amazon rainforest. Uh, here is, wow, how about this? Here is another writer would abolish, abolish a legal requirement to consult with indigenous communities about new energy projects to be built beside roads and railways that already cross indigenous lands. This is kind of like a cousin to the story of, well, the, the, you know, the highways and the railroads are already there. E e you know, they're already there. So if we want to throw up some shopping malls and some factories, and, and what not along the railways and the roads. We don't need to consult the indigenous people there. Let's see, and let's pick out one more. Wow, another writer uh, would benefit Serrado agribusiness by classifying all proposed irrigation projects as projects of public interest. Yes, making them easier to approve. One more, making uh, it easier to build small uh, hydroelectric dams. This next story, looking at this, this frog fungus that has wiped out amphibians all over the planet starting in the 1970s, they have actually found that it started uh, in the 1970s in, uh, in Korea. They've traced through all of this genetic Ted, they've traced it back where this uh, frog, killer frog fungus, that's uh, where it all started. Um, and the fungus began spreading uh, between 50 and 100 years ago with the expansion of international trade. There you go. All right, let's go over to Rwanda. All right, Ellen DeGeneres. Ellen DeGeneres will save the planet by visiting the shithole country of Rwanda in a mountain gorilla conservation effort. Oh God, here's about how cell phone apps will sell, save the planet. Uh, wow, never would have thought of this. Humans are leaving their mark on the world's protected areas. All right, humans are leaving their mark on the world's protected areas. About one third of the world's total technically protected areas, around 2.3 million square miles, otherwise known as 6 million square kilometers, 
bears the scars of substantial degradation at the hands of humans, according to research published in the journal Science. Uh, and how about this? I never would have thought this. Uh, researchers found that large parks and reserves held to the toughest standards are doing significantly better than those with laxer controls. Uh, you know, how many rants have I had? I've been ranting about this since I was down in Peru in 2009, how all of these clueless fucking morons, how all the governments of, uh, of these goddamn planet-eating uh, countries, this is especially true in the, in the tropics, what they do is they, they just draw these lines on a map out there in, in the middle of fucking nowhere. They draw some lines and paint it green between the lines and say that they are protecting some goddamn ecosystem or, or whatever. And you better believe this one-third of protected areas uh, being overrun by humans is only going to skyrocket over the next few years. Wow! Let's go over there to New Guinea. Hmm. Imagine this. Natural gas project that promised economic boom leaves Papua New Guinea in worse state. Hmm. Proponents of <clears throat> PNG liquid natural, uh, this LNP, the PNG LNP, what they're talking about is, is, is fracking, all right? <coughs> Proponents uh, of this corporation uh, or of this huge gas development, an Exxon Mobil led natural gas project in New Guinea predicted it would bring massive economic benefits to landowners and to the country as a whole. But according to two recent reports by this uh, group down there from Australia, New Guinea's economy is now worse off than it would have been without the project. Now this next one, when I, I love it when they ask a question, you know, the mainstream media has been cheering on uh, China's new ban on the ivory trade. Uh, anyway, the, but this guy is looking into this further. I should, I need to delve into this further. Uh, the new ban represents all the makings of excellent global public relations. The conservationist Carl Ammon asked whether it will in fact do more harm than good for elephants. And I'm sure that if you peel back the layers of the onions, that's what you'll find. I talked about this story a couple of days ago and actually made the, uh, that made the mainstream media about Greenpeace disowns paper giant over deforestation allegations. This is the story about these goddamn major planet eaters with the name Asia Pulp and Paper. I, I love that. Asia Pulp and Paper just flat out lying through their teeth uh, that they were going to be uh, a, 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 a group named Asia Pulp, Asia Pulp and Paper telling Greenpeace that no, we're going to be, we're not going to do any more planet eating. And Greenpeace actually believed their shit for like three years and laid off. And then it's just uh, discovered that they have been, imagine that a planet eater with the name Asia Pulp and Paper being lying sacks of shit. 
Anybody uh, in the connect the dots department, the destruction of nature in Sumatra has given rise to a criminal generation. This is kind of a chicken in the egg story. Uh, looking at uh, looking at how. Uh, Sumatra's uh, in environment has been destroyed uh, over you know the past however many years uh, leading to incidents of violence, law breaking, and general lack of respect of order uh, related to diminishing natural resources and destruction of the landscape. There you go. Uh, let's go back for some more dot connecting. Study links malaria to deforestation in the Amazon. A study, uh, this new study adds evidence to the argument that deforestation aids the spread of malaria. Uh, this is called Mother Nature bringing out her broom. Uh, just a little hint from Mother Nature. Here is some uh, lemur and going over to the shithole country of Madagascar. The Safaka lemurs, now listed as critically endangered amid a mystery die-off. In the last month, at least 31 of these uh, endangered uh, lemurs have shown up dead in Madagascar to this latest mystery disease breaking out. Good God. I love this one. <clears throat> typo. A typo derails landmark ruling against Indonesian palm oil firm guilty of burning peatland. A district court in Indonesia has shielded an oil palm company from a Supreme Court ruling ordering it to pay $26.5 million in fines for burning peatlands inside a high biodiversity area citing a typo in the original prosecution. The verdict has stunned, has stunned environmental activists who had hoped, who had hoped that the original guilty verdict would set a strong precedent for the judicial fight against environmental crimes. And you gotta love this. So now the government is appealing the latest ruling, which ironically is fraught with typos that, under the same legal logic, would render it just as invalid as the original guilty verdict. Yes, okay. Uh, here's an interesting one. Higher incomes not higher carbon dioxide levels drive forest gains. New research indicates that higher levels of economic development rather than carbon dioxide are responsible for some countries' gains in forest cover. The findings contradict several climate change models I would say climate change denier models that point to the role 
that higher concentrations of CO2 in the atmosphere can play as a fertilizer for plants. Uh, so, of, of course, what they don't point out is, so what they're talking about here, and, and I've had this rant before, as generally speaking, as, as people become richer, they become less planet nibbling, and they can afford when you reach a certain level of income, you see this in, in Ecuador, I remember pointing this out in some rants, as you become richer, you can afford to be a tree hugger and not cut your property down, and not cut your trees down. And generally speaking, in affluent communities, you will see more, quote, forest cover because people don't need to cut the damn trees down. Of course, what they don't talk about, it, as uh, more people get more money, they save their own trees, and they just go cut somebody else's goddamn trees down, which is exactly what is happening over there in China. As the national income of China rises, you are seeing more forest in the country of China uh, being brought back for the simple reason that they're just taking their raping and pillage model uh, to everywhere else on the planet where they don't have high incomes. This is the uh, inconvenient truth behind that story. Wow, did you realize that damming the Amazon has become unfettered unfettered. Hmm. There has been no mention since January that any planned Amazonian dams listed for construction by 2026 will be canceled. Uh, gee, no shit Sherlock, do you, do you think so? My guess is a hell of a lot more of them will be added. Okay. Here we go. <coughs> Indonesia enlists plantation, meaning oil palm plantation companies, to ensure a smoke-free Asian Games. <laughs> anyway, wow. Climate change could be intensifying dust storms in India, experts say. In the past couple of weeks alone, several dust storms, thunderstorms and lightning have hit several parts of India, resulting in the deaths of more than 150 people. Hmm. Do you think with the rise in global temperatures, the intensity of dust storms and thunderstorms is expected to increase in the future. Hmm. But even though dust storms are a common feature in India, there has been no focused work on studying the trends related to it. Wow. How about how many more? Of these, uh, do I have time for? Uh, let's do. Well, I don't know. A good God, this just keeps keeps going. All right, what do we have next? Uh, yeah, I'm just having to skip over a lot of these. New report unmasks indiscriminate killer of elephants poaching not for ivory but for skin. <laughs> Myanmar has seen an increase in the number of ele elephants killed over the past several years uh, and more and more of them are being found skinned. 
Jesus. Uh, this new report looking at the growing demand for elephant skin products from Myanmar's giant neighbor, China, which it blames for driving elephant poaching in the Southeast Asian country. Jesus. Wow. You're never going to believe this, guys. You will never believe the headline I'm getting ready to read you. Report blames new coal-fired power plant in Bali for pollution and loss of livelihoods. Uh, do you think so? Moving along. Good God. Uh, a boon for birds. Once overlooked, China's mud flats gain new protections. The shoreline of the Yellow Sea has been transformed dramatically over the last half century as mud flats have been filled in with rock and soil, replacing dynamic natural tide zones with solid ground for seaports, chemical plants, and farmland. Losing the intertidal flats has proved devastating for millions of shorebirds. Do you think so? But don't worry, the Chinese government has announced a sweeping package of reforms aimed at ending much of the land reclamation. Hmm. Stunned joy. Stunned joy is how one Chinese bird conservationist described her reaction to the news of the reforms, which she said could avert one of the biggest extinction crises facing migratory birds if they work. Okay, let's look at these two stories right next together. Here from the shithole country of Colombia, Colombia's last nomadic indigenous tribe faces extinction. <laughs> From the shithole country of Colombia to the shithole country of Tanzania. Tanzania's nomadic Maasai tribe losing ground to eco-tourism. <laughs> And anyway, guys, we're just we're we're just gonna wrap it up there in the shithole uh, country of Tanzania. I could go on with this, but I see I'm already up to 30 minutes, uh, and I'm only on part one. So I'm gonna wrap up the part one of today's ecological meltdown roundup rant and come back with a rather truncated version of part two coming up in one minute. Bye guys.